Hey, what's going on all you tech addicts? Jace Two Cents here, and today we're gonna take a break from the normal PC genre type of video, and we're gonna go into a different type of technology, and we're gonna talk a little bit about home theater. I used to have a 7.1 Yamaha surround system here in my living room, and when I went to Best Buy to pick up a new 4K TV, I got suckered into picking up a Sonos Play Bar and a Sonos Wireless Sub, basically on the recommendation of a friend who owns one. We're gonna show you how this thing works because it is at the same time, the most advanced yet simple home theater system I think I have ever used. EVGA's ACX 2.0 cooler with its three-phase six-slot motor, 11-swept fan blades, and double ball bearing design offers reduced power, noise, and thermals for the optimum gaming experience. Click the link in the description to learn more. I think one of the first surprises I got when I took it out of the box was the fact that there is nothing in there except the play bar itself, which you can see right here. And actually, it's pretty long. It actually runs nearly the length of my TV, which happens to be a 55-inch, and an optical cable and a power cable. There is absolutely no remote control. There's nothing else in the box except for uh, a, a single product quick setup guide. Now, the cool thing about this was it, it left me wondering, how the hell do you install this thing? Well, it's all done wirelessly through your home network and your smart device. Now, setup was actually a lot more simple than I thought it was gonna be. Normally, when you get a home theater set up, you've gotta plug in speakers, you've gotta plug in the, the ethernet or HDMI cable, or if it's a pass-through, you've gotta have HDMI in, HDMI out, and it can just, well, the, the old saying of it's like connecting stereo speakers, or it's like setting up stereo instructions, that's where it kind of came from. Well, this is actually very, very simple. The only thing in the box, optical cable and a power cable, and then a quick start guide, that's it. And when you plug it in, you're actually prompted to connect to the wireless device itself through your smart device, whether it be iPad, iPhone, or Android. And then it will walk you through setting it up to your own wireless that you may have in the house. And that's it, that is it. And the reason why you want this thing hooked up to your wireless, and I realized this later, I, I actually was a little bit annoyed that I had to connect to a smart device because I know some people who don't actually have a smartphone. But it all makes sense in the end when you realize what it's all about. Now, the Sonos Play Bar itself is actually pretty long. It runs nearly the length of my TV. It's got six mid-range speakers in it. It's a powered, or it's an active powered device. But when it comes to simplicity of the device itself, there's only two buttons on it. There's a play pause and a volume button. That's it. Everything else is actually controlled through your smart device. Now, I'm using my iPhone to do this. And when you plugged it in, you, it guides you through setting it up. It guides you through connecting it to your TV or whatever. I actually have the optical out running from my 4K TV here down to the Sonos. And then it asks you to pick up your TV remote or whatever remote you're gonna use, point it at the Sonos and push the power button, or excuse me, the volume button. And when you push the volume button, it then controls the Sonos from the right remote control. It's just that easy. In fact, it was, it was almost a bit too easy because I'm reminded of that old saying of this thing reads like stereo instructions because stereo instructions and hooking up home theaters and stereos used to be pretty complicated back in the days like the 80s and 70s. It was definitely difficult. I wasn't around in the 70s, but I hear it was actually quite a difficult time for setting up stereos. Now the Sonos app is entirely free and it's full functioning and it's not one of those things that you have to Let's say, you know, oh, if you want to get full functions, you've got to buy a paid version of the app. No, it's absolutely free. And the cool thing about the app is if you have friends come over and you want them to be able to control music and stuff, this is exactly how my friend was using the Sonos. When he's entertaining and having a party, then he can allow other people to connect to the device and queue up music to play. So it's almost like a jukebox. So you can have your friends put in their, their music requests and the Sonos will handle it all for it. Now the Sonos doesn't only work off of TV, it works off of anything. In fact, it takes your smart device and it turns this thing into the player and that just plays the music. Now there's a lot we can talk about with this. So I'm gonna talk about a couple of the expandable features and then I'm gonna give you a little demonstration of how the thing works. Now it doesn't come with the sub. The sub is wireless and it's individually purchased and it's not cheap. The sub is $700 and the soundbar is $700. So it's a $1,400 plus tax investment into sound. But considering the fact that I removed my 7.1 surround from the living room altogether, I have not had a single regret. 
Now, when it comes to connecting the uh, external speakers, it actually has satellite rears that you can wirelessly connect to this thing. Again, using the app and just simply pushing a single button and then it will connect the speakers. You can also do satellite speakers in other areas of the home. I could take another speaker, put it in the baby's room and play lullabies independently from what's playing out here. I could take another speaker, put it in the kitchen or put it outside and I could have outdoor partition volume and, and things that are playing independently from what we're watching here in the living room. So there is a lot of expandability to this, but unfortunately it gets pretty pricey because each one of those external speakers or those separate speakers are $200 a pop. They don't sell them in the pair, they single, they're single sale only, single, single sell, no, single sale, whatever. They sell them as one at a time. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of do a quick demo here of how this whole thing works. Transition. Okay, so here's the main screen of the Sonos right here. And as you can see in the background, I actually have the Guardians of the Galaxy Blu-ray playing back there. Now you can see we have all sorts of different things that we can do on here. We've got Sonos favorites. You can add things to favorites. You've got your playlist, this phone, We've got a built-in app, Radio by TuneIn, which you can actually use to connect to local stations if you want. Pandora, I added, and you can add other music services. You also have a TV because that's the one device we have hooked up to it right now physically. And then you can set alarms and go through other settings. And in, in other settings, you can change up the settings by the room type. So we only have the living room on here right now. And as you can see, we can play with the equalizer a little bit and you can do things like change the room name, TV setup and controls. You can actually add a new remote if you need to. Uh, white indicator light, uh, that's for the front of the Sonos. And then you can even remove the sub if you want. This is where you would add surround speakers if you wanted to add surround. And we're not doing that today. We're gonna go ahead and give you a pretty basic demo of how the whole thing works. Okay, so right now I can control the TV by the remote. I have a Logitech Harmony Ult uh, Ultimate remote. But if we touch on TV here, we can also control it with our phone. So right now I have it muted, but if we go ahead and take a look here, you can see I can just touch this, whoops, I can touch this slider and turn it up. Yeah, you guys, I wish you guys could actually hear the sound, but oh well. Okay, so we can do that, but let's say we wanna to listen to some music. We can turn on Pandora and then let's listen to some, you can see my daughter's got some stuff on here. Let's do some easy listening. And it's gonna tell me the TV's gonna stop. Whatever that is, we gotta change it. There. See? So there you go, we've got music playing now and we're not gonna play it too long so I don't get in trouble. But now let's go ahead and say that we wanna set an alarm clock. So we can say new alarm, we want it to go off in the living room and any other rooms that you have speakers set will show up here. You can say, I want the alarm to go off. Uh, we can have it go off by music, the Sonos chime, and then you can set the volume of it. You can set advanced features in there, how long the alarm goes off for, include grouped rooms. You could have it go off, I just hit the camera. You can have it go off in other rooms at the same time. There's a lot of things that you can control on here. So what makes that useful is it turns, if you put one of these speakers in your room, you no longer have the need for an alarm clock because if you're like me, I actually use my cell phone as an alarm clock. So my alarm clock is still my cell phone, but then I have an even cooler function for being able to set the types of alarms that I want. So that's just kind of a quick tour right there, but as you can see, we can go back to the TV just that quickly, and now we're listening to TV. You believe they call us criminals when he's assaulting us with that? There you go. But like I mentioned, you don't have to control it all with your phone. It's just a function that you can use if you want to. I've got my Logitech Harmony Ultimate One remote here, and then obviously this thing controls everything as well, as you can see. So setting up is very, very, very simple, but it sounds absolutely amazing. I wish you guys could hear it. You can't. I mean, even the demo inside of Best Buy doesn't do it justice. I even told the salesman, I said, look, I would never have purchased this thing based on the demo because it sounds like shit. But because I had already seen how it works and heard how it sounds in my friend's home, that's what actually sold me on it. So I don't know, Sonos, if you guys ever come across this video, you guys need to do some serious calibration to your demo units because I guarantee you're missing out on sales because your demo kiosk sounds like absolute garbage. So I just thought I'd throw that out there. But anyway, guys, 
I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. A lot of you asked me what I'm using for my home theater when I mentioned I got you know, kind of an upgrade in here. I haven't upgraded my home theater system in quite a few years. So now we've got the Sonos Play Bar in here and I can't wait to start adding other rooms to it because you are gonna be able to control it from anywhere in the house. You don't have to come in here and use the remote to turn it up or down if you have, say, an MP3 player hooked up to one of your um, home receivers. It's all done wirelessly through your wireless internet. Now, I mentioned earlier that it requires a smart device to set up. And that did make me a little bit unhappy because, like I mentioned, it's rare, but I do know of a few people who do not own smart devices. No tablets, no smartphones, they have a basic flip phone, and that's it. Some people still prefer to live that very simple, non-connected lifestyle. And it doesn't say anywhere on the packaging that this requires a smart device to install. That's where my beef is. Not that it requires it, but that the packaging does not say anywhere on it that a smart device, iPhone, Android, tablet, or something of that nature is required to set it up. And in my opinion, that is a huge mistake because even I didn't know that that's what was required to set it up. I knew you could control it that way, but I didn't know that that was what was required. So guys, this has been Jace Two Cents talking about the Sonos Play Bar with the wireless sub. What are you guys using for your home theater? What do you guys look for? A lot of people thought I was crazy for getting rid of the surround for a sound bar. But I'll tell you right now, I watched this movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, last night for the first time. Fantastic movie, by the way. But first time on my new TV with the new Sonos, and I absolutely didn't miss the surround sound whatsoever. The sound is so phenomenal. The bass is so freaking rumbly. And the cool thing about the sub, forgot to mention, is it does have two opposing subwoofer cones that are very oblong, oval shape. They're not round, they're oval, and they're opposing with the opening being in the middle of the sub so that each of the woofers are moving opposite direction from each other, which really cuts down on vibration of the unit itself. If you guys have ever set something on top of a traditional subwoofer that has a single cone that moves in and out, you know it vibrates and things on there can rattle and move around. But because of that, my entertainment center doesn't rattle anymore, but I still get just as much rumbling bass through the ground. Explosions in this movie were absolutely amazing with that sub. And it sounds just like a movie theater, but I don't have things shaking and rattling around. I think that imp opposing design of the subwoofer cones is making a huge, huge impression on the way vibrations work. But you don't lose any of that rumbling low frequency sound whatsoever. So there you go. Tell me what you guys are using down in the comments. What kind of sound systems do you like? What kind of sound do you look for? And as always, guys, follow on Twitter if you have any questions. Forums, forum.jacesense.com, Facebook, and of course, right here on the YouTube channel. And we'll see you in the next one.